Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor and Door Texan. Today I'll be showing y'all my recipe for braised venison shanks. Now the shanks on a deer are often overlooked and underappreciated thanks to what looks like a pile of silver skin and connective tissue. Most hunters just toss them into the grind pile if they decide to eat them at all. But I'm here to tell you if you follow this recipe, braised shanks will easily be in your top five deer meat dishes. Starting out, you'll need one to two venison shanks. Since I'm just feeding two people a night, I'm working with one shank that's been separated between the upper and the lower shank muscles. Also, if you need a quick refresher on how to break down a deer's hindquarter, make sure to check out my video on the subject. Now, a reoccurring question I see come up often is, do you need to trim any of the silver skin, ligaments, etc.? My answer is no. When braising this cut of meat, all that tissue and collagen melts down into a rich, buttery gravy that is one of the key components to this recipe. Prepping the meat, start out by applying an even coating of olive oil and then give the entire surface a liberal sprinkle of salt and pepper. This is a very savory dish, so what looks like a heavy salt now will barely come through on the finished product. Last up for meat prep, I'm calling on my go-to wild game seasoning, Musket Powder Black Label. This is a very unique coffee-based rub that marries perfectly with venison. Don't freak out if you don't have any handy today, this is just my secret sauce. But definitely check them out and grab a bottle or two for yourself. And now with our shanks prepped, we're going to head over to the range for the rest of our steps. Before anything else, make sure you have your oven preheated to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, check the drop down description below for the full list of ingredients involved in this recipe. The next few steps will move fairly quickly so it helps to have everything prepared. Alright, set a medium sized oven safe pot or dutch oven to medium heat and add about 1 tablespoon of olive oil. Now add your shanks and brown all sides of the meat. After browning the meat, toss in a quarter cup of white wine or red wine vinegar and drag a wooden spoon across the bottom of your pot to loosen up any of those burnt bits off the surface. If you don't have a wine vinegar, you can also sub in one cup of red or white wine. After the wine vinegar, toss in two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar and give the bottom of the pot a couple final scrapes. Then to calm things down a bit, add three cups of venison stock. If you don't have venison stock, beef stock would be the next best thing. Then, if not beef, try chicken. Now add three tablespoons of tomato paste, two tablespoons of herbs de Provence, four minced cloves of garlic, one teaspoon of kosher salt, roughly one teaspoon of fresh ground pepper, two bay leaves, and finally two sprigs of rosemary. Now give everything a quick stir and let the liquid come up to a bubbling simmer to ensure that everything is well mixed. Now it's time to get to braising. Cover the pot, toss it in the oven, and set a timer to check on things in one hour. After the first hour, take your pot out of the oven and ladle some liquid over any meat sitting above the stock. Also, this is a great opportunity to check the doneness of your meat. If it's not falling apart with the poke of a fork, it's not quite dinner time yet. Check your pot every hour, repeating those same two steps of ladling the liquid and checking your meat with a fork. Cook times differ depending on setup, but mine typically takes about three hours before it's clearly done. After three hours and 15 minutes in the oven, my shanks were fork tender and ready to go. You can shred the meat for tacos or simply lay them on a bed of fluffy mashed potatoes. Ladle some of that absolutely delicious braising liquid over everything, maybe garnish with some rosemary, and enjoy. Tasting this dish, you will swear this is a rich cut of beef and not the calf muscle and shin bone from a deer. There's layers upon layers of flavor, and the meat itself just melts in your mouth. This recipe is an absolute home run. It makes use of a cut of venison that is often overlooked, and then it turns it into a rich and hearty meal that in my experience, people cannot get enough of. Try this once, and I swear you'll be making this recipe many, many years to follow. That'll do it for this one, and thank y'all so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more great content to come. All right, y'all, take care.